Well, let's return to our top story now on the claims of chemical weapons used in Syria. I'm joined live from Washington, D.C. by Phyllis Bennis from the Institute of Policy Studies. Phyllis Bennis, uh, the U.S., Britain and France all say uh, they've been collecting evidence to determine whether or not chemical weapons have been used. But this collection uh, of hard evidence is a daunting task, is it not, particularly with very limited access to the war zone? There's certainly a great deal of problems in terms of any technical work that might be going on. The U.S. has been very clear, the, the Obama administration has been very clear that they are not yet convinced that the allegations are true. Uh, the only thing that's gone public so far is the report of this one doctor, and I don't think anybody is going to accept the idea that there's no other explanation as definitive proof of the use of chemical weapons or certainly by whom those chemical weapons might have been used. So there's a lot of technical problems ahead, but the much greater problem is the political problem before we even get to the technical side. Uh, so, so what about the UN investigation then? I mean, their team seems to be stranded in Cyprus at the moment, and the Assad regime's not likely right. to cooperate and let them go waltzing in to investigate this, are they? Well, the government in Syria had actually called for a UN investigation some time ago, but they insisted that it be narrowly focused with a mandate that would only allow investigation of the possibility that the rebel side, the opposition side, had used chemical weapons. I'm assuming, although we have not heard anything definitive yet, that the U.S., the Brits, and the French probably want a mandate in the U.N. Security Council that would only call for investigating whether the regime was responsible. The only way this can work is if there's a very broad mandate for exploring any possibility of chemical use by any side in Syria, because right now, in the context of a civil war, it's not at all clear who has control of those weapons, where, how, by whom they might have been used. There is a precedent in the United Nations going back to 1991 at the end of the first Gulf War in Resolution 687 when the Security Council called for a zone free of all weapons of mass destruction across the Middle East with no exceptions. That would include Syria's chemical weapons, any future weapons of any sort of mass destruction. It would include Israel's nuclear weapons. It would prevent Iran from ever getting uh, uh, nuclear weapons. That kind of move with a very broad mandate is, in my view, the best way to move forward. But to do that, you would have to have the supporters on the council, meaning the U.S., the Brits, and the French on one side, Russia on the other side, would have to agree to convince their partners on the ground to allow an all-sided, very broadly defined uh, uh, mandate uh, for an inspection team whose job it would be to find any chemical weapons evidence. Uh, just a final thought from you. Um, it is significant then that the politicians uh, in Washington uh, and London are being extremely cautious uh, about this, but what can the West do if they do find uh, the hard evidence? Because there's no appetite for military intervention, uh, so could we see them perhaps giving military aid to the rebels or something? You know, I think it depends a lot on what we see. There's a history, as you well know, uh, and your, your viewers will well know, from 10 years ago when the U.S. went to war in Iraq based on fake information. Now, we don't know if there's any fake information going on, but we certainly know that there is no valid information yet. So I think it's way premature to be talking about whether this should result in a, quote, game-changing scenario, whether it be boots on the ground, helping the rebels with, with more weapons. We need to move towards demilitarizing, de-escalating the number of weapons of all kinds that are flowing into the region, not sending in more weapons and escalating the civil war. It's going to make things worse, not better. Killing more Syrians on any side with conventional weapons in a so-called search for alleged chemical weapons that may or may not even exist, may or may not have even been used, may have been not used by either side that we know, this is just making everything worse. It's not going to make the situation better. Phyllis Bennis, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera. Thank you.